much. Uh, Alan told me I couldn't talk too long, so I uh, had to save a little bit for tonight. So I, I want to thank uh, the uh, municipality of uh, Cumberland and the town of Amherst, Steve Malpe, and uh, I get all, all of the sponsors there, Chucky and uh, Jill. And Jill was always soft, his wife always won. <laughs> but uh, anyways, we'll, we'll take care of that the next time we see him. Uh, funny thing, Hal said to me today there, he said, uh, yeah, he said, all your buddies, are they, we first started doing hockey with you, he said, they're, they're coming uh, tonight to the game. And uh, he said, uh, what I'm, I'm half thinking about uh, getting a police car to leave the uh, limo in on the ice. I said, Gee, for Jesus' sake, don't get a police car, they'll all run. <laughs> Myself, myself included. <laughs> All right, and uh, Jimmy was talking about how tough it was uh, to play at Amherst, and a good friend of mine I played junior with, the, the, his rule was that we didn't have a chance to, to win the game with five minutes left, and we're going to brawl and toughen them up, uh, soften them up for the next time to come in. <laughs> you know? So we had uh, we had some great members in the junior team, and, and uh, it, was, uh, it was really hilarious that. Uh, uh, when I look at the equipment and I look at the old pictures and, and the equipment versus the, the equipment today, uh, and I'm extremely honored that uh, the guests uh, of people from Annie Kanish, uh, there, uh, uh, Big Donnie McIsaac, his son's assistant GM with the Chicago Blackhawks, and uh, Frank Peter Beaton, uh, one of the toughest guys ever come to the Maritimes. Uh, thank God he was playing in the WHA. <laughs> and uh, Peter and I had a, had a great experience down, uh, what was the name of that little town we were in there? Be Peter and we had that brawl that night. Where was that? We were, uh, I don't remember. The ball <laughs> That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Fifty to two, would we be here? <laughs> <laughs> and Brophy, uh, I, I can't say enough good things about John Brophy. Uh, uh, my last year that I played monthly with the Monthly <laughs> Alpines, uh, uh, Doug Messi was a coach, Mark Messier's father, and I don't mind saying the only reason he had the job was because he had a son in the National Hockey League that could get uh, 120 points, 150 yeah. points. One of the best players to ever play the game, Mark Messi. So when you play professional hockey, come August, come, come September, you know that you want to uh, your body, get your body and your mind prepared to, to go to training camp and try to get a spot in the club. And basically, uh, he was so jealous of my leadership skills that he dumped me right at the, at the deadline and I never had a job. And uh, when you don't have a job in the game, sometimes it you, you be, become pretty difficult to live with. Like, and, uh, Anyways, I remember my little daughter Tracy come up uh, from the cottage. I was up in the garden, and she said, "Oh, she said there's a Mr. Bowie, a Mr. Bowie on the phone." She couldn't pronounce his name properly. And uh, anyways, uh, I went down, and uh, it was John Brophy calling me from Montreal. And uh, he said, "Rouse, I want you to come play for me." He said, uh, "I, I, uh, I can't. I haven't got a contract to offer you yet, but he said I'll work my ass off to get you a contract." And uh, anyways. Uh, Sure enough, he called me, and uh, we. Uh, I went down to training camp. I wasn't in shape, and uh, he sa I said, well, bro, if I'm not in shape, because, you know, I wasn't going to camp. He said, oh, don't worry about that. I'll get you in shape. I'll get you in shape. Well, <laughs> anybody that's ever seen a John Brophy practice, or uh, what you have to do afterwards, and, uh, I mean, uh, I was probably in the best shape of my life when I played for Brof. And uh, uh, not only did he get me a contract, he paid me $5,000 more than what I was making in Moncton, and uh, he didn't have to do that, and uh, he really, really took care of me. And I remember the secretary, they were handing out the meal money. And in those days, a contract player got so much, and uh, if, you were, if you were a free agent, you weren't under contract, you probably got half of that. And it just happened that Brof was coming in the uh, door when she was counting uh, the money for me, and she said, well, you're not under contract, you're only going to get this. And that poor secretary broke a flip out on her and said, I've been under contract for hundred years. Hundred years you've been under contract. Give them contract money. <laughs> and the story that Hal tells about that night we lost, well, when we lost, you after Brof was done with the reporters, you know he was coming in. So I don't think he had a shower that night. Dave Dallas and I were, were always smart enough to get out before he got in. <laughs> and 
guy. I, you, you know, so I, then the next day I remember one of the funny stories with John was uh, we had this kid on our team named Mike Lawler who went on to play for the Montreal Canadiens. He was a hell of a, hell of a defenseman. And uh, anyways, uh, that next day I, you knew Brof, Brof was going to be on the war path. And uh, I can remember Dave Allison and I, we were two fat guys on the team, but bro, and uh, we were hiding in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the washrooms. We had the doors closed and we had our feet up so he couldn't see us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we knew he was looking for somebody. And then poor Lawler were coming, uh, good morning, Mr. Brophy. <laughs> good morning, good morning. He said, you're fat. He said, you're fat. You get in on the bike. And he said, you put some miles on the bike. And uh, he goes, well, Mr. Brophy, how many miles? He said, a thousand. <laughs> Mike, Mike Lawler was probably the best condition guy in the team ever had an outside of him. <laughs> but he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But uh, not, not only did John Brophy take care of a uh, fellow Nova Scotia, Bill Riley, he gave Stan Henniger, he gave Mike Jeffries, Whitney Richardson, and Mike McPhee, who all went on to the Montreal Canadiens. John gave all those young lads from Halifax. They were young guys that uh, uh, they had never been drafted. They had never played professional hockey. And he would bring them to the camp like a taxi squad. And by God, by the end of the year, those kids were all bona fide American Hockey League players. And uh, they, 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 uh, they all played a, an important role and scored some big goals for us, you know. And John, i got to thank you so much for that because, uh, like I say, those kids would have never had an opportunity. They lived their dream, you know. They lived their dream. And the one other uh, story I got to tell you about that never, uh, I never uh, in my life ever thought I'd be coaching against John Brophy because there's only two guys in professional hockey that ever won a thousand games, and that's Scotty Bowman and John Brophy's the other guy. So, uh, and like I said, I could tell you John Brophy stories all. All day long. I mean, uh, we had a, uh, you know, we had a great, uh, we had a great time. We had a great ride, and uh, John would, uh, he was the best dressed coach I ever seen or that I ever played for because he'd have a thousand dollar suit on and uh, two hundred dollar pair of shoes and no socks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we all, we all loved you, John, and we were, we were talking to uh, Dave Allison there the other day, and he, he says he keeps in touch with you and that type of thing, and. Your bark certainly was a, a, a lot louder than your bite, and uh, uh, thanks again for that opportunity because that, that gave me uh, an opportunity to play another year of professional hockey. And also, when I got to coach against John, and as, Dan, as uh, uh, Jimbo would say, that uh, I found out that John was coaching in Andy Kanish, and we had gone in and, and whipped Andy Kanish pretty good the first couple of times we played him. So my kids were sort of, uh, you know, a little overconfident. And I took them in the dressing room and I said, I've got to tell you something. The team that you faced earlier in the year is not going to be the team that you're going to face tonight. And we needed, we needed one point to clinch first place overall in that game. And John didn't, get, didn't give us anything. He played us hard, right to the wire. Uh, I think that game ended up 3-3. I'm not sure if we went into overtime back in those days. But one of the great, I, what I consider one of the greatest honors after, and John knew I needed that point. But if he could have beat me, he was going to beat me. And that was a proper, proper thing because that was John Brophy. And when I got the point and the game was over, John looked over at me and saluted me. And, and that was one, I consider that one of the greatest honors in hockey. great to see the see the players again and uh, uh, also the guys that we started off and we played junior with and I, I can tell some great stories about when we were playing junior and traveling down to Windsor and Percy Paris was there he was probably going to be number one uh, you know, Uncle Percy Paris who played for the Windsor Royals back in those days right? you could think of the Montreal Canadiens in there and you couldn't win <laughs> <laughs> Plus, they made you walk up three flights of stairs and you get the dressing room and everything was frozen. <laughs> I'm sure that Terry and Dutch and all the boys, uh, uh, Dave and Eddie, we, we had, you know, guy experts, they all remember that. And, uh, uh, but we had great times. And uh, I'll, I'll speak a little bit more about our founder, Mo Ben, tonight. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about him. 
And uh, just in case I don't forget tonight, uh, uh, my daughter Tracy said to me one time, she said uh, that she used to have fairly high-pitched voice in those days. Yeah, <laughs> you love those players more than you love us. <laughs> and I said, Tracy, I do love those players. Uh, but I do, and I said, I love you guys every bit as much. And, uh, you know, we were very, very blessed to have a great family. We always got along in our family, in our household. Uh, it was, there was so much fun because we always uh, made fun of one another and we had a lot of laughs and that type of thing, you know. And as you know, I lost my son Billy. We lost, uh, they lost a brother and lost uh, uh, a comedian. He was a comedian of the family. And I'll tell you, you talk about everybody having uh, one another's back. Anytime I ever went to, uh, to discipline Billy, he was the youngest. Those two girls would come out with the claws, I'll tell you. <laughs> they wouldn't let anybody anybody touch him, and a couple of Billy's great friends were best friends that he had growing up right here. And I know, like Jimmy said, Billy's looking down now, and, and uh, you know, i got to be good now so I can meet him on the other side. So, anyways, uh, we'll, uh, you know, uh, enough about that. But I, again, I, I thank you for the tremendous support we had when our family was home going through that situation as well. Uh, Bobby Best is, uh, you know, he was the best referee that we ever had in the, in the Maritime Junior League. You got that. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you Bobby Best story. Like I said, you know, I mean, you're Jimmy, you're Dan, uh, or 40, you know. And he was great. He, he, he never threw us out of the game, but he'd be over threatening and throw us out of his game, out of the game. And I said, I said, I said, uh, Bobby, you throw me out of this game. I said, I said, I know where your car is parked, and I said, my homeboys will take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bestie, so thanks for not, not throwing us out of the game. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit more tonight as we go on. And, uh, and uh, Roy Malby, uh, I, I want to thank you, Roy. You, were, you and Walter coached and managed, and uh, you guys, uh, you guys were incredible. The hours that you put in at the rink, and I can remember uh, we played junior hockey, and uh, uh, I can remember we were all out playing on the ice pond on Saturday morning playing hockey, and now all of a sudden we heard this scream and this holler, and, and, and we looked, and there's Walter, because Walter was coaches at the time. Get the hell off that. And go home, but that's how much we love the game. We, we play, uh, we would play in the day, uh, play in the morning, and then go play hockey at night. And and, uh, and we always done uh, exceptionally well. And uh, I have a great story to, to tell tonight about when this franchise first started, when Mo Ben first started this franchise. And, and I, I will tell you that tonight. And Roy, again, I want to thank you for not finding us so hard when you were the president of the league. <laughs> up at the top walking around the concourse before thinking, Billy, come here. <laughs> now, you can't do this, you can't do that. Right? Yeah. Anyways, uh, so uh, yeah, he was great. We were one of the best presidents we ever had because it didn't matter if it was the Amherst Rammers who it was, you were always a fair man. Very, very fair. <laughs> so thank you all and, uh, and uh, we'll see you tonight. We'll have a good time. Bills.